Over the last couple of weeks, we've been in the book of Joshua doing a series called Stay Close, and we're going to be continuing in that for a few more weeks. But a couple of things that have jumped out at me specifically are covenant, God's agreement or declaration of this is how things will always be between us. And to go along with covenant, we have his promises, which are fulfilled and they are true and are never going to fail because he does not lie. And also his presence. He's never going to leave us. He's never going to abandon us. It's throughout the scripture. It's his promise to us. He's with us. Uh, Now, what about us? What does he want from us? Especially, how does he want us to walk with him? Because really, the idea that there's a covenant between us and God that shows us that we're to be his people means at one point we weren't his people, and at one point we weren't walking with him. And so what does it look like for us to be able to walk with him and to see our lives and our our every source of our being focused on walking with him and being a a son or a daughter of his. And I find that over and over again, we want to focus on behaviors. We want to look at the things we do on the outside. And behavior is important, but really the Bible talks about how everything that we say and we do flows out of our heart. And heart, you know, for us, we think Valentine's Day, we think this organ right here. The idea of heart in scripture is the very core or center of our being. And if we want to see our outward actions and words be shifted and changed, we have to allow God to do a transforming work in us on the inside. And there's this really awkward at times state that we end up functioning in where we want to be living differently than we are and we want to be honoring God with our words and our actions and our attitudes and our tone and in every area of life. And we find that we're falling short. So what do we do in that situation? I'm really glad you asked that question because in Psalms we can revisit the scripture in uh, Psalm 139 that, you know, it's a prayer from David saying, you know, search me, Father, know my heart, try me, know my mind. If there's any wicked way in me, pull me to the rock everlasting. Recognizing I'm fallible, I'm broken, I, I, I can't do this on my own. And I ask you, you know, by the power of your Holy Spirit to do a transforming work inside of me. And that starts with taking a look, what's there, do a diagnosis, bring it to my attention. And part of us having changed minds and hearts that it results in changed behaviors and actions and words is acknowledging and knowing where we've been and what has gone on and where our hearts happen to be. Another part is being able to say, God, I'm powerless to change in my own my own power and my own strength. If I could, I could just do willpower. I wouldn't need Jesus. I need the transforming power of your Holy Spirit. And I'm inviting you, Holy Spirit, to come into my life and to do a work in me to make me new. And then there's the when we are reminded of, oh, I'm doing it again, or, oh, I'm slipping into old patterns. Instead of beating ourselves up, say, okay, Lord, I realign myself with you, and I thank you for examining me. I thank you for pursuing me. I thank you for reminding me. And it becomes this thing where it's, it's a behavioral shift. It is a heart shift. It is a discipleship shift, where the very things that had so clogged our our hearts and minds and our mouths and the things that came out that we're not honoring to God get shifted to be things that line up with him. And it's it's not something that happens overnight, but it's something that happens as we intentionally set ourselves to be people who, not perfect, but who are dedicated to obey, dedicated to repent or turn from one way of thinking, our own way, to follow after God's, and then that we don't ever hesitate to go before him asking for forgiveness, asking for his grace, and thanking him he's going to give us what we need to keep walking with him. So stay close to Jesus. Be looking for ways that you can pursue him and to put into practice what you know to put into practice today. And when it comes to your attention that you're still falling short in certain areas, don't beat yourself up. Invite Jesus into the middle of that. Ask the Holy Spirit to change and to transform and to make you aware of it. And you'll see those things begin to shift as he turns your heart into a heart that pursues him. Right on. Have a great rest of your week.